Whoa, 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 what are you doing, child? Uh, I, I thought I would catch some wild, wild animals. Catch wild animals? What are you, like, ten? Uh, uh, eleven, sir. I can't believe you. You're the second child I found wandering around in the tall grass unsupervised. That's it. Come with me. Now the two of you sit here and watch some Jail Tactics devlogs while I call your parents and figure out what is wrong with them. Hey hey, welcome to another Jail Tactics devlog. I'll be your host for the remainder of the vlog. Please keep your eyes and ears directed to your screen for the remainder of this ride. So, the new things for the Wasteland Warden are some levels I made, and I will be taking you on a tour and prepping you for the next release that should be out soon. Without further ado, I very quickly showed you guys the two levels that I had made before the last devlog, but I thought that I would have a closer look this time. First off, we had the sewer level, and for this level I wanted to get a multi-level scene working. So in my game, everything is done by scenes. Whenever you enter a new area or re-enter an area, I am setting a scene up. So for the home base, I have a scene called Home Base First. And when I set that one, you enter and there are robots attacking and the merchant asks for your help. If you just set it to home base, it means that you already beat the robots and you can just wander around peacefully. So with the sewer, I wanted to set up two levels within this one scene. It starts in a small desert area with a pipe and then you go down into the sewer. Why does a desert have a sewer? Because there are only so many things in a real desert, so I had to fudge it a bit. So in this level, I have sprites all over the place, and this is really just me seeing what I can get away with. I'm trying to maximize the 3D part of the playing field, even though everything in this level is sprites, except for these dividers here. Things like this pipe that just kind of smacks you in the face as you get close to the camera. Oh, I just love it. I also wanted to play around with some lighting, which I ended up being very happy with. As I work out this style, I'm also collecting these objects, and uh, that way I can use them in later levels. This will hopefully make the later levels go a little faster when I'm making them, and also give me lots of ideas and tools to use to make those levels. So, much like the first level, each level will have some sort of dialogue that tells a bit of a story and unlocks a new enemy that you can capture for your team. From then on, the new enemy will have a chance to appear in random encounters on the world map, but also, you can always return to the level and be guaranteed to find that enemy type there again. For the sewer level, I plan to have some cyborg rat guys all arguing over who is the rat king. And then you show up and they decide that whoever takes you out will be that king. The next level I made was the dry sea level. This was more about seeing what I could do in the 3D space, specifically with this wrecked ship. I also, as I mentioned last time, left it as a night level. And what I think I'm going to be doing with this is making different tiered levels. So. All the levels that are close to the base on the world map are going, are going to be tier one levels. But as you walk a little bit further away from the base, everything shifts to a night mode. The world map will get a little bit darker. And then these will be a little bit more difficult as you get further away from that. It'll go back to day and you'll be in tier three levels. Not only is it a visual signification of the difficulty increase, but also just a variety in the levels that I can play around with. I also made the water meter, which ticks down as you walk around in the overworld map. And what this does is prevent anybody from going into tier two right at the beginning of the game. You actually have to go find the truck, unlock that, and then you can travel a little bit further, a little bit faster. You'll get to tier two before you have to find more fuel for your truck. But anyways, back to the ship. Uh, the idea for this story is I'm going to make some sort of pirate cyborg that lives in the ship and is interested in stealing all your fine treasures. And that will be the uh, character that you unlock during this level. The next level I made was the desert biot level. This came from a necessity to make some desert props for all the levels. I wanted some cacti and Joshua trees that I could slap down on any level as I'm going through here. So I worked out a whole bunch of desert props in Magic Voxels. This is also a level with a lot of blocked off areas. This is going to be the real reason for different levels really in the end. The grids get turned off where it overlaps with these objects and it makes moving around in a battle a lot harder. I'm not 100% sure what the scene will be for this level, but I think of some sort of like rival character that might appear a few times throughout the game if you happen to find his levels. And he'll eventually help you fight some bosses or something if you 
uh, find enough of his levels and advance his story on. But I'm not 100% sure of that one yet. So next, since I needed a place to where you could find that truck, I made another set of props for an auto shop. Because how else are you going to keep a truck running in the apocalypse, right? originally planned to put a pixel art gas station in the background, but when I was trying to line up the parking lots, it kind of did not make any real sense, and I had to scrap the background. Or at least I'm thinking of turning it into its own level that offers a refill for the truck as long as you fight the baddies that are there. During the process of trying to get the background to work, I ended up making this infinite background that started to grow on me. So I decided to have a level that doesn't actually have any pixel parallax art background. This one is just a ground tile that goes on forever. The scene here will be some bandits trying to run you over when you get there and you have to beat them and commandeer their truck. Each level I make seems to be cooler than the last in my own personal opinion so it may not be a big surprise when the last level I made was my favorite. I wanted a junkyard level where you find a doctor. Since everyone is either a robot or a cyborg, a junkyard mechanic would be the closest thing to a doctor, right? This guy will offer to sell you patches every time you go to his level but also a patch crafting bench for a lot more money of course so you can make patches at your home base. Patches will be kind of like a health potion for your teammates. The problem with the junkyard level is that I was having trouble finding the background for it. So eventually I just decided to make my own. Then of course I had to make all the 3D objects for the level and slap them into Unity and bam. Definitely the level that took the longest but also the one I'm most proud of. I even made a time lapse of me making it and you can put it on my channel. So you can go check that out if you'd like. I also needed a barrel fire for this level something I plan to reuse throughout the game, so I spent some time on that one. I decided to go with the Unity's particle system, but using pixel art shapes that I made as its base, I think it turned out quite well in the end. Well, that's the grand tour of the levels. Other than those, I worked on finishing up points of interest. They now turn into little icons for the levels I made once you visit them. And the easy levels also randomly get placed in the easy zone of the map every time you start up a new game. This then gets saved to that location so that each new game will have new locations and they stay there until you either erase that game or start a new one. But enough about me, let's cram in a community spotlight. This time I'd like to point the light at Neat Games. They have been very supportive of this channel since its conception and has been making some very cool projects. Heat Seed is a steampunk and magic world where you team up with a magical leaf to figure out what's killing the heat seed trees. This project looks amazing. Modeled after one of the best games ever, Zelda Orcarina of Time, and the lore sounds right up my alley. Plus, there's something about his intro. Neat games. Oh yeah, I could just listen to that on repeat. I don't know what it is. But go over there, check out his channel, get as hyped as I am for his new project, because it just looks jaw-dropping. Okay, on to quick tips. God, this video is getting long already. Um, what I have here for tips for you is, let me just check my list. It looks like I have tuples next on my list. Tuples are weird. So the use case for these are that you need to return multiple values from a function. Yeah, this is a program heavy tip. Uh, return multiple values, but you don't want to muck around with declaring a custom object or structure or anything like that. Um, the magic here is that you just put your values in a bracket. So in this function, I want to return the person's age, but I also need the person's name, so I know who the hell we're talking about here. Um, so we just set the return value to be an int and a string, putting them in brackets, uh, and then the same with the return values. You can name these, so when you're fetching the value, you can use the name, otherwise they're named something like item one and item two name them it makes it much less confusing another fun fact about these is that you're not limited to two values in fact i don't think you're limited at all but i mean by the time you're passing the second and third value you're probably better off structuring your data a little better than this but anyways uh at this point i'm working out a few bugs before the release a new version of itch that has all of these new levels in them after that, I'll be start working on the next release that will have all these dialogue scenes and new enemies I've been talking about. At that point, I'll be done the tier 1 section of the game, upgrading the game status from prototype 
to demo, which is exciting and may mean that I need to start bugging YouTubers to play it. Unfortunately, I have to start working full time, so this game is going on the back burner in a pretty severe way. I, of course, will continue to work on it, but with the 40 some hours a week taken, and I'm actually not sure if I've ever mentioned this, but I do have a little three year old, my spare time is dramatically reduced. You may have already noticed that I've been MIA for the last few weeks, but never fear. I love this way too much to ever let Wasteland Worden become a dead project. So follow me on Itch for news on updates and releases. Follow me here for periodic rambling. I plan to do a retrospective on my year of game dev next. A wish listing the game is always helpful, and uh, if you want to give me some financial incentive to get this game done faster, you can check out some links below. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great day.